Because one, it was 22 songs, and uh, but I had been working on it for two years, and it, it was a song. It, I felt like I had made a song for everybody on this project, everybody, and it didn't matter whether you from West Coast, e East Coast, Midwest, you know what I'm saying? Like the South, I wanted to make a song for everybody just to show them that I can be a part of something, and I felt like if Crit was it didn't work, then there wasn't any room for me at all then. You know, and so that was my last hurrah, but it paid off. Because I guess Shaw Money reached out, right? After yeah, Shaw Money reached out, and it was like his energy was like, yo. Y'all know if y'all ever met Shaw Money, but it's like, yo. <laughs> Sign for <laughs> <said> G unit, G <laughs> unit. He was like, yo, y'all, we got to do this. Let's do this. And when he, you know, he, he ran it in there, and we all talked about the game plan and wanted me to always stay myself. And yeah, L.A. Reed was there. I met L.A. Reed. And yeah, we signed. What was that like? Def Jam going to the big Def Jam offices? That was funny. I would tell y'all something. I never really said a word to LA Reed, I don't think. I was like, <laughs> it's just he nine. shook my hand and I just was smiling. <laughs> I wasn't doing shit else, was just like, and you know what I'm saying? But I think they probably thought I was crazy. But the reason I was smiling because the reason I was smiling because in my mind it seemed so surreal that I was that close to escaping poverty. It was like, oh shit. Financial freedom is literally here. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, shit, I don't got nothing to say to you, dog. Speechless. You know, yeah. you have. What? Yeah. He was like, yeah. I was like, ah, like this, guy, this guy smells like yeah, money. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> now that I was just like, bro, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, he, he's looking at me and I'm looking at his, his literally his view of the city yeah. and the table. I'm like, ah, ah, I'm here. This shit crazy. <laughs> Straight up. But then you went back and went made another mixtape. Right yeah, right because like, what was the process going on at that time? Well, at that time it was a lot of major artists getting ready to drop on Def Jam. So it's not that I got pushed to the wayside. I just understand the rotation. Yeah. And I wasn't a starter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, to buy time, I decided to put out a project that could just show them that we can still move without, and that we can heat up my opportunity. And so we dropped Return of Forever. We did South by Southwest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now what was what was it like making that? I'm sure you wasn't in one room on that. You was able to like. Oh no, I went back to one room. Oh, you did? For that yeah. I, oh shit! It, what the 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 my own shit didn't come till 2012. Yeah. And I tell y'all, I mean, a lot of artists they get the check and they literally go spend it yeah. on you know maybe materialistic things of that nature. Yeah. I I invested in a tour. I went on the Wake and Bake tour after that. And so a lot of what I got, I was like, nah, we gonna hit, we going on tour for branding and uh, then we did the Smokers Club tour. So I've always believed in, in you know, literally investing in my career, yeah. you know, and people could see it because 2010, 2011, I had a wooden Mississippi chain on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I wasn't gonna buy a chain until I could really afford one. And so I didn't buy one until literally Live from the Underground came out because I was like, all right, now I can go do that. But did you feel, from a music standpoint, did you feel any pressure since Crit was here was viewed as like this instant kind of classic with the second mixtape? Yeah, Return of Forever, the, the response was amazing. It was beautiful, but it was um it was going from Return. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's still, she's don't, not the only don't, one trip, that don't trip. Don't trip. If everybody don't clap with you, it's all good. If everybody, it's all good. Um, <laughs> I, Return of Forever was well received. Yeah. Um, but it, apart, after it came out and we toured, I, it was I got a little nervous because I then I found out country shit with uh, Ludacris and Bun B was starting to move, yeah. and so there was a like we ready for your album now, and I was like shit I just did twenty some songs though, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and uh, a lot of bars. yeah and then I had three months to start working on it and I got into the process and that's when I started running into the turmoil with sample clearances and things of that nature. Yeah, cause you talk about like you put money on the floor out and then you the album didn't come out till yeah money on the floor came yeah, out right. September 11th. The album yeah. didn't come out till June 2012. That's yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that was just the business of it. Sample. Yeah, the business. Like um, rolling the rollout plan of it. it. It's a it's it's a rollout plan that goes along. And I was still creating in the same at the, at the same time. I was telling people about the album date. 
Yeah. And that's some shit you the just people not want to one. Do. Yeah, they're like, yeah. yeah you said you giving us the album. Yeah, yeah this really day, is. and I'm like, I only got ten songs though. You know what I'm saying? So that was a problem, and so we pushed back. So was forever in a day to kind of just answer that, or to to feed the audience who was kind of hungry for an album, and like, yeah. At the end of the day, did you think that also maybe it may have hurt the reception of Laughing Underground? Yeah, because I dropped Forever in a Day a month before my album came out, but it was all original. It had a storyline. The cover was crazy. We shot videos. We toured. We rolled it out. And then the album came out a month later. But it was without the samples that I really wanted to use. It was from a perspective that it, I s- it sounded a little angrier than a lot of my other music. And you could tell that. You could tell that. And then I know you could tell. Y'all could tell that at Rap Radar. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna He's on can we talk about that? Rap Radar. Yeah, let's talk about they that. They gave me the 10th most disappointing album yeah. of 2012. Yeah. I'm uh. happy about that. <laughs> boo me out the nah, don't boo the homie. Don't boo Yo, the homie. First crowd, no, no, I no, 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 boo the homie. <laughs> because I, uh, I, I respected it though, and everybody on my team respected it. Because for them, there was like not at first though. No, no, nah, nah, <laughs> but no, nah, but no, nah, like the first four, four, four or five hours, I was mad. But then yeah. I was like, all right. But uh, <laughs> didn't you put it up on Twitter or Instagram or something? Yeah, that was up. in the yeah, four, yeah, that was yeah. the four or five hour little yeah. part. <laughs> that was right in that gap. You know, it was the first thirty minutes, and then. But um no nah, man I understood because you were literally looking at it cuz when in in the interv- I mean in the whole write up it was comparing me to myself yeah. and it was all my projects yeah. so I couldn't be like oh shit they're not comparing me to other artists it's all me yeah. you know what I'm saying and so that's when I was like okay I just got to make sure either I make a project that's so separated or I just got to kill my previous work and I respect it. Because you said that. That's like a philosophy you have not to. Yeah. So some of that was inspired by yeah. negative. So I wasn't even tripping. Review. That was <laughs> that was beautiful for my career. Well, I think what it was like if you look back on it now, like it's not even like you got a lot of negative reviews. Most of the reviews nah, were positive. Nah. But I think that what was kind of missing, or I think you may agree with this though, is that unlike your other projects, it just didn't impact culture the same way. And I think everybody you had to deal uh, with the other mixtapes, right? right? For whatever reason. Yeah. Like yeah but every, most people, most of the reviews. Loved it, but they also they also said that too. That yeah. but but did you feel that? Did you feel I like mean something was kind of missing in terms of it? And is it, was that because people still were digesting forever in yeah. a day at the time? I mean, I, I realized that once I had to start taking samples away from the songs. There was like yeah. five songs that were supposed to sound a certain way, but I had to get rid of the samples a week before I could put them on. Oh, songs that made the album, you took the samples. Yeah, out. so they didn't sound. So you quite replayed the same. them. Yeah, that's always. And hard. it, it yeah. changes the dynamic of the songs. Yeah. And so, it, yeah, it, it was, I mean, I realized that, but then that's why I applied so much of a attention to King Remember the Time, knowing it was so far away from when my album would drop. Yeah. And the album itself, I literally removed myself from the business just lightly and st- stuck to the music all the way through. Before we get to uh, King Remember the Time, because that's my favorite project. Oh, uh, let's go. Uh, Porch Light with Anthony Hamilton. Yeah, that was supposed to have been out of here. My wife loves that record. Good that's, that's a hit exactly. in my household. My household. That's what I'm saying. That's a hit record. Yeah. So that's that's an important but record. But that record was supposed to change. I was that yeah. sample. We stuck to the groove. I didn't do everything I should have done to it because it was such a rush to get it all done. I go back and listen to that song. I'm like, oh, should have been a breakdown right there. Yeah. I should have let Anthony Hamilton voice breathe more on the song. Yeah. But it was, you know, it is yeah. what it is, and yeah. I, I let that be. But people go back now and listen to it and be like, damn, that shit was jam. Yeah, could have been out of here. Yeah. So you did follow up th- whatever reception lap on the ground with King with King Remember the yep. Time. Back to the free music, yeah. back to a full project. Back to the sampling. Sampling James Blake. It doesn't Anything matter. We don't I have to clear it. <laughs> Shout out to him. So what was up. that like? You said you was was you was even though you might have got some negative reaction to the to the Def Jam album, it seemed like you said you was angry in that phase, but you probably felt more of a sense of relief making th- this this uh, King Remember the Time project. Yeah, right? I think it was a learning process. Uh, you you learn like sometimes it's not gonna go your way. And that was the first time I dropped a project that everybody was looking at, even people that may not have heard my music before. And I created an album so uh, some somewhat aggressive, so somewhat in a place where I was like, I'm approved to you. I can rap. I can rap. I can rap. And I lost the fact that it's like it's not about that. It's just what am I saying? And so King Remember the Time was like, nobody's expecting this, and we're just gonna, I'm just gonna do me. And that's why I was a relief. But then I learned, like, oh, I need to stick with this formula. Well, what was that process like? That was just, was that a transition? No. Nope. Did that feel different than making the other projects before that? I just went back to the st- stay in one room, sleep on the floor. And at this point, I didn't have to, but it was like, I gotta remind myself of what it was like creating Crit with Sam Return Forever. Yeah. So I made myself a little pallet on the floor, I kicked <laughs> it, and I, I stayed in this room, and 
This is real shit. I watched all of Fringe season and made that album. That's why it's a little spaced Friends? out. Fringe, not Friends. Fringe with oh. a G. Yeah. That shit dope. Go watch that shit. But if you you might watch that shit, be like, oh, okay, I understand why he made Can't Remember the Time now. I thought it was Ross and Rachel and shit. Nah, nah, Fringe. I still got to be spaced out even if I'm not making music. Straight up. That's some trippy shit, Fringe, too, though. Straight up. What station is that on? Netflix. <laughs> Straight up. Netflix, the whole season. <laughs> <laughs> but so when, 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 so when you put that project yeah, out, crazy. when you put that uh, King Remember the Time out, did you, did you feel right away like, okay, the reaction is where it needs to be and like whatever people may have felt about Life and Underground, I'm viewed right back where I need to be career-wise? I think so, but I also think that people were like, Crit, we know you can do mixtapes that sound like albums. We want you to make an album that sounds better than your mixtapes. Yeah. And so I, I did King Remember the Time, and I started like, yeah, but then I started seeing people like, what's up with the album? Way back then. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, I need to get back in the gear focusing on that. Because I know what I'm capable of doing, with it, and, and, it, and there's no pressure, there's no stress. But I need to push myself to that limit to start creating the kind of music when there's no stress, under pressure. Yeah. And that's what Catalytica was. It's like, I'm going to create one of those albums that's under pressure, and I'm going to make sure it come out shining like a diamond, shawty. Yeah. No, it feels it feels good, man. Yeah, you got you got the song. What's the song you on there? Which the one? Midpoint of the album. I want to ask you about. Stand uh -oh. by. Stand by. That song. Like, okay. talk about that. Like you said, like cause I, to me, you played like a lot of the records from the uh, first half of the album, and then you got mm -hmm. kind of selective on the second half yeah. of what you was willing to reveal, right? Mm -hmm. Were there certain songs you don't feel comfortable sharing yet? No, I just think you need to be riding your car to understand them, or at yeah. least in your house cleaning up to get yeah. it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we was in a room and we all kicking it and I just played <laughs> King of the South and shit. <laughs> and I can't play you this other record because you need to be in an intimate setting. Yeah. You know, and so um, it was one of those things where I played Standby because Standby is a point of the album where you grow up in a space where you're now you're ready to experience life on the grown up side. You're not really as interested in doing stupid shit. And going to jail is means you're going to jail for a long time at this point. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. standby is like that transition. The content changes a little. Love means more. The respect of the people around you, the respect of a woman means more than it did when you were younger. And you can hear that in that song and all the songs after that. Yeah. Like, Do You Love Me? And that's a car song, but you said yeah. it has kind of more of even a, a deeper vibe, right? Yeah. Oh, well, on Catalactica, your, your prized possessions or possession that you love or have some kind of sentimental value can talk to you. And so... My car got jealous that I pay so much attention to the sub. And so it <laughs> asked me, do you love me for real? And so I respond by singing to it the entire song. You got a lovely lady singing on that too, right? Yeah, Mar Ruby. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's your lady friend, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why you You put the friend on it. That's my lady. Like though. Yeah. <laughs> lady, there you yeah. go. No, that's, not, that's great, bro. Oh yeah, I was happy. I was happy yeah. making this album. Is that, is that partly why you're in a good a good space? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Eating good, I'm taking vitamins and shit. <laughs> <laughs> how yeah, you guys? Yeah. How'd you guys connect through the music? Whoa, you getting dumb personal? <laughs> <laughs> shit, <laughs> this is unpersonal. But uh, I was very fast through music. Yeah. Shout out to <laughs> Steve O, man, because Steve O also does marketing for her as well, and they okay. maneuver and. Yeah, we met like that in the studio. Check your music out. What's the name again? Sounds. They got they got a SoundCloud. The music. Ma Ruby. Ma Ruby. Check that out. Yeah, that's shit. Funny. Talented yeah. young lady, man. Oh yeah, man. But you close it out with another talented brother, Lupe Fiasco, man. Lost Generation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that yeah. song is strong. Lu Lupe's verse is strong on that uh, too. Oh, Lupe like. verse is crazy on that record. Yeah. But that record is on the tail end of the album, and well, it is the end of the album. But just like I created the planet. And you get to go through the whole process. I also destroyed the planet at the end of the album. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like me destroying Catalactica and the idea so I can move forward in my career musically and move on to something else. And so that's why I destroyed the planet Catalactica. And you already got a plan. I heard you already got a plan for your next album, a secret plan. I already know the name and what my sub part four going to be about. <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> That's too early, man. I can't. Nah, that shit is. Uh, I've been like, I've had that name since 2005. It just now it makes sense to 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 name an album that. So how? It, so now. No. <laughs> that was That's cool. the same dude that said something about Sammy Sosa. <laughs> Straight up, he's breaking Everybody rules in this. Security, watch out for that one. <laughs>
<laughs> how do you, you know, nowadays it not used to be the game was so much about sound scan and what's your first week? It seemed like mm. the game isn't about that anymore. No. Like, how do you measure success? Like, wh- how are you going to feel, what's going to make you feel like Catalactica when November 11th happens, November 18th comes, November 19th, like, you know, you're about to go on this big tour. Like, what's going to make you feel like, okay, this really was the next step? I feel like it'll be successful just when it comes out. You know what I'm saying? Um, all I ever wanted to do is make sure people could hear the music. And that's all. The, it never mattered about numbers. Um, you get caught up in the business and you start thinking about it that way. But it's really about just putting out music that people can listen to. Yeah. And appreciate that. Oh, but you, but you got more drive than that, man. You want to be like I think a lot of times when people look at the new generation, they'll mm-hmm. mention like a Drake or a Kendrick mm-hmm. or a J Cole. You want your name right there in that conversation. I mean, I feel like my name is in that conversation. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, but I mean, but it just be that cat in the corner that be like, "What about <laughs> crypto?" <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. It's somebody in every room that be like, "Y'all motherfuckers tripping." <laughs> but um. But why is that? Like, but you want the ones, you want the number, only to be number one, number yeah, one, I you mean, want but, that spot. But you got to understand what success, you got to figure out what success means to you and what you consider success. I was successful the minute I signed with Def Jam and I dropped my first major label album. Produced all that, by you too. That, yeah. at, that was, what? Like, that I never would have, yeah, that was like, yeah. what the fuck? I never would have expected to do this. This was a dream and this is what's happening. Everything that happened after that, I couldn't, I didn't know what would go on. I didn't know what it would be like. So at that point, I'm on the ride now. The journey has begun. So I really can't judge my success based off what happens now because it's all I don't know. But all I wanted to do was sign a label and drop an album, and I did that. Mm. So now it's just about creating a space where I can be happy, I can live my personal life, I can create music from a place that I did when I didn't have anything. And I'm finding that out now, and I'm becoming very comfortable with if it don't sell like it sell, I'm going to go out on a tour. I'm still going to touch all the people that needed the music at the time. Mm-hmm. And it might be 10, 15 years from now, people may go back and listen to it, but that's what timeless music is. And that's what all this is about at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also good to look at it from that deeper perspective because you have a great relationship with OGs in the game. Like a lot oh of the guys yeah. you idolized growing yeah. up, you're not friends with. Like, what's that like? It's great because they, they help speed the process up of me growing up in this music game. Because these OGs, one, they don't mind telling you what they did wrong. Two, if you snap on a record, they'll tell you. You killed that shit, even if they own it. It takes a lot for somebody to be comfortable with themselves enough to know and tell you, you killed that shit, though. And so that happens. So we're giving this energy off like you can do whatever you want to do with this shit. Just keep pushing. And all these OGs then kind of gave me that game. And they want to see me get to that next step and that next level. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's like Bun B or... Oh, definitely Bun, David Banner, you know what I'm saying? Every time I run into 8 Ball and MJG, they ain't got nothing but positive things to say. Being in the studio with Raphael Sadiq is nothing but, bro, make music. You know what I'm saying? Like, all these people, Ludacris, you know, like, these people are definitely like, bro, just do you. Speaking of Ludacris, you also switched management. Like, why was that important to do right now in this phase of your career? Because of growth, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Again, I'm I'm not crit on crit was here. You know what I'm saying? Like now I'm uh, I'm the dude when you get the standby on the album where I'm trying to figure out my real purpose. I'm trying to build something not only for me but for the people that I work with and for my family outside of that. And so making that shift was me trying to get to that next level and start focusing on, okay, how do I make this brand bigger? And Shaka, Jeff, Dutch, they understand where I'm going with this. You know what I'm saying? And so they understand the brand, and they let me do me to the point, and they, they go out and make shit happen. And then they bring it back and be like, yo, what you think? Let's move it, move on, boom. And we, we push it. One thing that's about to happen, this tour starts tomorrow, man. Yeah, Talk about this tomorrow, tour, man. man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, pay Attention Tour starts tomorrow in Charlotte. Uh, shout out to 2-9. They on tour with us. It's going to be a lot of energy. I mean, they got Shit. the young brothers, 2 9. Yeah, it? yeah. Well, hold on. You said that like I'm old. <laughs> nah, That's how man. they do you. Like, damn, nah, bro, Chris, you ain't got no shit. now, man. You a young OG. I'm 30 pounds lighter than I was on Live from the Underground. Uh-oh, I'm uh-oh. jumping off stage. And what the fuck? There you go. Y'all they like, damn, like Chris, real? Like, yeah, I got big. Got the, how'd you do it? How'd you drop Shit. 30? Didn't drink so much. Vitamins. <laughs> Eat <Eating> good. <laughs> Gluten free. But you think it's going to make a huge difference being on the road, too? Are you probably going to lose more being on the road? That's a hell of a workout. I might drink a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I might not be around so much organic food and vitamins. How much new stuff are you going to do from the, from the, on the set list? Like, what's going to make this that. show different than uh, the uh, Big Crit fans that uh, seen you so many times? 
See you get booed at Highline. <laughs> see you get cheered yeah. at Highline. Everything, man. Um, see me on Top Four just came out. So yeah. there's a lot of material people never heard before. Um, and just incorporating that, I'm probably g- maybe incorporate Catalytica a little bit. I don't know. I Sneak don't think so. Yeah, but you won't find out about it. Okay. Unless you come to the show. I'm coming Monday. Monday. Well, no, next week. That'd be the day up, I man. don't even do the song, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> we skipped that. We yeah, went that to Toronto and did it. The New York show? The New York show? No, I got you. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I got I'm you. I'm going to come to Atlanta when it ends, too. I'm going to go to the Four. last show, Oh, yeah, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, I got right. to see. I got to see. Yeah. Close it out. So October 7th, we got a show. Shameless promotion. It's crazy. Highline Ballroom, please. Come through. Let's go. Where's the, where's the, no, they had it written down already. I don't know where everybody's at. I can't see. It's dark out here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> am I? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say UGK. UGK, Outkast, hey, Bob and JG. Bobby Womack and Curtis Mayfield. Willie Hutch, Willie Hutch. Willie Hutch. I be dead serious. Like, Willie Hutch was amazing. Do you feel like it's because, well, do you do also appreciate him, you think, even more because people, some people don't know his genius? Like, is he because he's underrated or? Man, I don't know. Take Care of Mama is one of those songs, like, I can't explain how that song means so much to me. Take Care of Mama. Take Care of Mama is an amazing song. Yeah. And it has no drums. You feel yeah. me? Like yeah. it's all, and he was composing all this music and writing all these songs. Like it was crazy. Yeah, and that's what you listen to when you're riding around, right? Yeah, Willie Hutch, yeah, man. That's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, wait, you can't hog everything, <laughs> man. It's easy, 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 killer. All right, what we got here, real quick? <laughs> okay, thoughts of ATS is as if crit- the tracks that didn't make Calactica will become a mixtape. Um, I can't say that because some of those songs we decided not to put on Calactica because they would have sound they would sound better on the next album. Yeah, you also did Week of Crit. Why was that important? Week of Crit. Shout out to Steve O again, man. Steve, that was Steve O yeah. from GFC idea to do Week of Crit, and it was because we believe in if we drop music now, we need to f- we we got to figure out a way to make it a part of something because yeah. everything needs something to be attached to it. Week of Crit was one of those things where it's like let's. While working on the album, let's create a body of work just to give people something that's different, that's not really a part of Catalytica. And that was literally before uh, See Me On Top. Talk about some of those collaborations. Like, you got with Rick Ross. Yeah, shout out to something. homie Ross, man. Showed mad love. He just, like, he jumped on. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped on the record, man, like, literally within a day and sent it back to me. You know what I'm saying? ASAP Ferg on Lack Lack. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, that might be a bonus one, right? Maybe. Yeah, that yeah. might be a bonus one. Yeah. We did uh, Steps featuring Big Sun Smoke Dizzle. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Cool. This person, uh, Ample Vision, wants to know about that outside production, man. They want to know any placements coming up, and or, or are you secretly ghost producing any records? Oh man, <laughs> I, I will hope so. I, I I haven't had the opportunity to make as many beats as I would like to because I didn't all the way produce this album, so I kind of stopped a little bit, and I produced the last few records on the album, but um. Probably on tour, I'll come up with a few things and a few concepts. Uh, I think I might have one on Ross next time, I pray. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? My man Mike in D-Town wants to know why is you don't do more visuals, man. What happened to the only one in my trunk videos, man? They want more visuals. That my That's trunk what the video. diehard fans. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that my trunk video just ain't come out how we wanted to come out. Pimp, so <laughs> that'll never come out. Insomnia ain't come out how we wanted to come out. Pimp, so that'll never come out either. Only one ain't come out. <laughs> I wanted to come out, so that never come out either. But they let you know that I'm never dropping a video that don't look like it's supposed yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. So that quality over quantity, quality. once again. Yeah. So if it ain't right, that's why you ain't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess this is the producer, my man Otis Clap. He said, how do you mix your beats to sound so big? And what equipment do you use? Like the sound, give you a secrets away. Man, you want to know your production That's secrets. funny. Well, first off, a lot of those records that I mixed that and had nothing to do with engineers, I just mixed them. I really didn't give a fuck about how the bass was EQ'd because I felt like it's just how it's supposed to feel. And so some of that shit was all wrong, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. But that was what it was supposed to be because that shit sound good to you, so that means it worked out. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, it's just like, you, it's, if I, would, I could tell you what I do, but that, don't, that, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it because we all have different ears. So all you can do is sometimes test your record with what works now and then figure out sonically what you enjoy to hear. You know what I'm saying? Most people really don't know the ins and out of mixing, and they just know this feels good. So just make something and mix something and it to where it feels good to people, because that's really what it's all about. Yeah. Right here on staff, the homies not factor, Jerry Barrow, they want to know, what was your first car? I had a Maxima, and then um, and I bought a Monte Carlo 1986. I sold 15 beats to somebody for $4,000. Wow. And I bought a Monte Carlo on some 24s. 
and I was too you excited. You was, was winning. So excited, I never drove the car. My cousin drove the car. Never took it to Meridian, Mississippi at all. Never made it past. Damn, tell me about it. He got in the wreck, <laughs> bent the muffler, engine engine flooded. Car got totaled because it's 86. Wow. I never was behind the wheel. I didn't let him wreck the car. <laughs> Nobody would let anybody wreck the car. It wasn't his fault, though. It was some old lady hit him, and I'm being totally honest. I'm not even bullshit. Yeah. But it's all good. It's love. We ain't tripping. One more question. My man Max says, uh, when was your faith in God really challenged, and have you ever lost faith? When my faith in God really challenged, have I ever lost faith? I think when I lost my grandmother, because it was like, all right, now it's like, oh, shit, I can lose all of them. This person was just talking to me, and I didn't. 2000, I literally shot the Hometown Hero video the day that she passed away. Yeah. I didn't go inside because she was asleep. And on the way home, I got all the way back to El, uh, Atlanta, and then my dad called me. And that's when I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Because she was the only person that would tell me something that I just 100% knew. She just wanted, she just, she, she mean it wholeheartedly. And that happened, and it put me in a space where I just didn't care so much. And there was a lot of songs coming out of that. You know what I'm saying? Children of the World type came out of that feeling. Sure. It's a real vent kind of vibe. Like, ah, I'm asking what's up. Like, I'm praying, but I don't. Things ain't working. And then I was in a space where I ain't have shit. Yeah. And so, yeah, man, that, that was the beginning. But, again, them turning points, you got people in your sp around you that's like, yo, bro, it's all good. Yeah. And then once you get around family that you ain't never seen before and you lay somebody you really love down to rest, it puts everything in perspective at that point. Yeah. Like, we all got each other. The only time she could all get us together was when she cooked. And this was the last time she was going to really have all of us together. You have to take advantage of that. Yeah. And I think that, was, that relieved me at the end of the day, you know. So what do you enjoy strength from now when, when times get hard? Oh, uh, man, those songs that I wrote for, um, my friends and my family, a lot of the people that work with me have been my friends for years. Like Big Son, you know what I'm saying? My partner, Money Black, shout out to them. My cousin, Quack. Like, again, Steve Old Dutch, you know what I'm saying? Shipes, like all these people I've known for years, too. So you still draw inspiration for your friends, and they keep you pushing. Yeah. I heard for a little bit of, before we go, Combat Jack uh, caught the podcast. Uh, Combat I, thought it was, so I thought it was crazy at the end. Like you thought you gave some great advice for new artists. Because a lot of times new artists will say, well, how do I get on? How do I get on? Yeah. Talk a little bit about your advice for new artists. I thought that was very interesting. Man, just one, you got to be yourself. And you got to build a foundation from the ground up. People, you can't escape what your life was like before you was rapping. Most people nowadays can do their research and find out exactly what the fuck you was doing. So you got to be honest, first off. And you got to film the whole transition. You gotta show people that you want them to grow with you because I want my fan base to not only grow with me, but I wanna make the kind of music where it doesn't matter at that point, no demographic. And you have to be strong-willed. Don't let your partner, if your partner's not good at making mixtape covers, don't let them make your mixtape <laughs> covers. You gotta invest in yourself. You gotta partner's literally- mixtape covers ugly. Straight up, you gotta, in, you gotta invest, your, invest in yourself. Don't spend the budget money they first give you pay your taxes. Don't jump on the first deal you get either. Because nowadays, a single can take you only so far. But once you hit that ceiling, it's about what's next. Most people drop a single but never have an album ready. So what you're doing is rushing to drop an album, and this album doesn't live up to this single, and then you disappear. So you gotta have all that in place. You have your game plan in place. Bring people along with you that also know who you are as an individual. Because when you get around people that don't know you, it's easy to smile, but when they go away, you by yourself. And then who the fuck are you gonna talk to? All these things is important, man. And, I, you know, I, mean, I pray for everybody. It's an art form. Tell your story. Just don't take advantage of the art form because it ain't got no feelings. And once it gets you, then you fuck. And then the business is cold, too. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah. Nah. But no, we got to go. I'm sorry, man. It's a beautiful journey. My bad, man. bro. It ain't Yo, my fault. Congrats, man, on the journey, man. Thank you. Good to see you, Big Crit. Thank you, bro. Let's keep going, baby. What's up, baby? Good, chill, chill. How you feel? How you feel? I'm good, I appreciate it, brother. How was it out there, man? Oh, it was amazing, man. The fan being <laughs> back. I tell some jokes saying there, but I think people really relate to my story. It's loud up in there. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, man. That's how you want it to be, though. Catalactica, baby. On the way. Everybody's excited. Yeah, November the 11th. We're going on tour tomorrow. Same with promotion. I'm all about it. <laughs> my G. Thank Straight you. up, man. I appreciate it. Thank bro. you. <laughs> Wilson from that, 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 that.